Hello, hello. Happy Thursday, everyone. I hope everyone is having a great week. It's almost Halloween, which is pretty crazy. We're already at the end of October. So today I have with me Kaylin Morton. Kaylin is one of our ROI Inner Circle members, and my name is Diana. I am the Client Success Manager for the ROI Inner Circle. I was chatting with Kaylin the other month and was just hearing her story about how she's been managing her properties. She purchased 24 properties in two years, which is pretty crazy. And she's balancing that with two children and living in both Toronto and Buffalo. So I just thought that her story was super inspiring and wanted to share that with you guys. Welcome, Kaylin. Where are you calling in from today? So we're in our duplex in Buffalo. Today. And who is this you have with you? And this is my daughter, Evelyn. She is a year and a half. Oh, hi, Evelyn. <laughs> She's, She's adorable. Got a big, a big snack in her hands to keep her <laughs> occupied. <laughs> That's awesome. So, what do you currently do for work? Uh, so, I operate a, um, a consulting and a coaching and consulting business that I launched in July, and it specializes in unlocking team and individual potential. Uh, and I specialize in, um, in the Enneagram, which is a tool for understanding personality stats. That's awesome. Congrats on the new business. You Thank have you. recently quit your W-2, right, to start your business? Mm -hmm. Yes, although in Canada we call it a T-4. <laughs> so how was, what was that like, doing your corporate job? Uh, so it was, um, it was kind of a long time coming. It, um, in a way, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be, partly because it was right after Matt leave. And um, I, I had I had over a year of Matt leave. Uh, so I just kind of slipped out there. But um, it was comforting in that there was a plan in place to have a way to replace the income. Right, because at that point, you already had your real estate portfolio built mm -hmm. up, right? Yeah. Oh, is your... I should say you meant you mentioned twenty four properties, but before anybody goes crazy and like, how is that possible? Twenty four doors, uh, <laughs> so quite a few less than twenty four properties, just just doors. <laughs> twenty four doors is still incredible in two years. That's amazing progress. Thank you. How did you get started in investing? So it was, I would say, the in intention started in twenty twenty or towards the end of twenty nineteen. Uh, in 2019, we closed on our second condo in Toronto, and that was meant to be uh, where we were going to live. It was going to, going to be our primary. And the big conversation around that time was, do we sell my original condo in Toronto uh, to pay down more of the mortgage of our new place that we were buying together? And, and I didn't want to sell. It was rented out and it was cash flowing. And um, I recognized that I had a lot of um, emotion with it because it was my favorite place that I'd lived. And, and so I was trying to separate that, but still really wanted to hang on to it. Whereas my husband was coming from having rented his whole life, um, avoiding debt and thinking the most important thing is to pay it down as fast as possible. So it was definitely a, a conversation point that, um, that was you know a big topic. Um, Plus, I was super pregnant, so it was kind of hard to really focus um, uh, focus on it. But in the end, we decided to keep it, and uh, it continued to be a cash flowing property for us. Um, and then, when we decided to, um, where when we needed to move to Buffalo, we rented out the second condo and we kept that one as well. So, um, so that's that's how we got started, um, basically renting out our primary, and then. Um, when and then we moved to Buffalo and started uh, purposefully investing in duplexes here. That's awesome. So, how did you convince your husband that it was a good idea to keep the first property? Uh, I didn't do it. It was our um, our mortgage advisor that he some he came up with. I mean, I don't think he was intending to. He just mentioned how he had some condos that he'd invested in, and why wouldn't he want somebody else to pay down his mortgage? And that sentence really stuck with my husband. And he's like, actually, that's a good point. We have somebody else paying down that original mortgage that I had. We should just get a whole bunch of people to pay mortgages for us. And 
Uh, and so that was like a big 180 shift for him. And, and he actually was the driver initially in, in our investments in Buffalo. So he, he, um, yeah, I was busy having a baby and <laughs> being with a newborn and he was like, let's have a plan for passive income. <laughs> That's awesome. And then that passive income allowed you to leave your job. Yes. Yes. Well, I wouldn't say quite that. The pa- the We're building it up so that my husband can leave his job. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we're, awesome. we're, not, we're not there yet. We're, um, we're still, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say actually that we're um, a huge success story yet we're um, we've had a lot of capital expenses that have um, have sucked up uh, the majority of our cash flow so uh, fortunately my, my husband is still employed so we can put order contributions into our business uh, to cover that but um, we know that we're creating a really good foundation for the next few years Right. Real estate is playing the long game and seeing those returns in the future and also having generational wealth to leave to your children, too. Ah, yes. Yep. Yeah, we love the idea of transferring a property into their name and that being their education savings plan Um, and then actually giving them the sort of the um, authority to make the decisions on rent it out or sell it or so we're, we're excited to bring them in. They're, um, they're three and one and a half, so we're not quite, not quite ready to have those discussions with them, uh, but we look forward to, to doing that. Yeah, Jennifer loves involving Dylan in the due diligence process, and she's utilized the strategy to start paying Dylan and contributing to her different investment accounts through real, their real estate business, which is awesome. Yeah. So how, when did you join the ROI Inner Circle? I was a founding member, so I think I don't. I, I think it was 2020 or 2019 that you guys started. Mm-hmm. I think 2020, and so I was one of I was the first uh, in the first group and the first non-American in the group. And then, what has your journey looked like since you've joined? So we had those two condos in Toronto, and then in January 2020, we got our first duplex in Buffalo. And in September, we got a second one. Uh, and then in 2021, we got two more duplexes. And one of them is the one where we live now. We moved into that shortly after we closed. Uh, and then we cl- closed on a, our fourth duplex um, around the same time. Uh, and then the following year, uh, we closed on um, a, a fourplex, which we were under contract for about nine months. It was... Um, <laughs> hair pulling frustration um, to, to have taken that long. Uh, and then we also closed on our first uh, short-term rental investment, um, which is in Arizona. That's exciting. Well, yeah. And you guys are finishing up a remodel there, right? Yes. So that, and that, that was meant to be a six week remodel and we're now in month three. So uh, mm-hmm. a few things have come up. For example, there is a huge, hail and rainstorm that flooded the place right after we put the new floors down. And so there's a a little bit of uh, drama there, but uh, fortunately the contractor was on site and it wasn't a few months later with guests on site and that, because that would have been a total nightmare. (laughs) So we're able, we're able to to sort it all out Mm -hmm. uh, pretty efficiently. That's awesome. It's always good to have a good uh, team on the ground. Yeah. Yes. How did you overcome the fears with investing out of state? So it's it's interesting. I I in my first so I guess through my experience, I didn't have to overcome it because my husband started, and he started with such a, an inexpensive property, and it was just a little experiment, and he was excited about it, so I was excited about it, and then he went for it, and it worked out, and. And we were, we built um, some really good relationships along the way, from agent to um, uh, uh, contractors and property managers. So, with that experiment, we had kind of the um, the security that the team was in place, and so we felt confident to continue. 
Have you had any challenges investing as a non-American? Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so we we don't have the um, the luxury of having like the 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 ten mortgages. Or I guess it's just everything has to be in my husband's name, and then we transfer it to trust. Um, and so uh, setting up, like sometimes I'll go to set up the the utilities, and so it needs to be in the owner's name. And so I give that name, and then just recently I called to make a change. And they're like, oh, we, we can't talk to you. We have to talk to um, the, 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 the owner's name. I'm like, darn it, I was the one that gave you that name. <laughs> so just kind of running into um, not really having stuff in my name has been a challenge. Uh, but uh, definitely being having one American in our partnership simplifies. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's awesome that both you are now in real like invested in this journey so that you yeah. guys can work together yeah <laughs> that's it's so fun. silly though that you can't change make changes to the utilities yeah it's like shoot i should have said my name was jr <laughs> <laughs> when i made the phone call if you were to start over what would you do differently um besides giving a different name <laughs> yeah yeah, that, that, that stuff. Uh, I think we, I guess, I guess the challenges are all, like all of the, the capital expenses that we've run into. So I think um, rather than buying really old homes um, that are, I think either buying something new or remodeling is would probably be what we would do differently rather than having all of these problems come up um but yeah i think that's the and and yes and then of course uh using the right name when i call utility companies mm -hmm. with your purchases were you not remodeling them when you were purchasing or making any renovations uh can you say that again with your purchases had you been renovating them when you purchased them yeah, but they were more cosmetic renovations that we were doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's trying to push buttons on my keyboard. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> you want to see here? How about my mouse? And how do you feel like being part of the R winner circle has helped with your investing journey? Uh, so, I, like, I find it to be like this wealth of information, and I can often have a um, a, a question and then go search it and find a thread, a conversation that can be just super helpful. Um, so I've been kind of a, a, a passive member in a way that I haven't been posting a lot of content, but I've been consuming it, which has been <laughs> really nice. Um, plus knowing that there are so many people out there that are doing the same thing and that it's it's not rocket science. So it's, it's like, we're, we can figure this out. Uh, that, so that's definitely, um, it's nice to have community for that. Yeah, it definitely is nice to have the support of others and be able to find feedback when you need it. We just launched our cash flow investing course where Jennifer goes over all the different aspects of investing in real estate, like paying your children from your business or yeah. renovating a property, figuring out taxes. So I think it's great to have those resources available when you need it. 100% great. And it's nice. It's nice just to have sort of the, the blueprint. Right. Oh, I have some support over here. <laughs> What's next for you guys? Uh, oh yeah. What's next? So actually, when we talked a month ago, I was thinking, what's next is another primary. Um, something that we talked about was another primary uh, home in Buffalo because we've been in this one for over a year now. Uh, and so could like take advantage of uh, lower uh, mortgage rate. Um, but the the drive for that was to um, to get my son into um, a desirable school, so moving to the neighborhood of that school. Uh, but I just went to a information session about the school yesterday and learned that being in the neighborhood doesn't necessarily give us an advantage. So. Mm -hmm that took away the like the, the main drive for, for that one. So we'll, uh, we'll, it's still a possibility, but we, 
we're we're going to reassess what our next step is. Mm -hmm. And you're currently house hacking, right? The duplex that you're living in. Yeah, and um, so which has been going really well. We we launched it uh, last April, and then it's been booked up pretty much every weekend since. Uh, and then um, it was starting to die down, uh, so covering our expenses perfectly. Uh, and then it started to die down the bookings and was wondering what's going to happen in the winter. We got a lot of snow here and Buffalo isn't really um, a place where people come on vacation, especially in the winter. Uh, and um, we just got an inquiry for a three month uh, stay um, and she's, she's going to check it out next week. So, I mean, that could be absolutely amazing uh, if, we, if we get sort of a medium term rental downstairs through the winter when I was expecting it to be really slow. Yeah, that would be perfect. Mm -hmm. I love that you've been able to house hack while having a family. I feel like a lot of people have that limiting belief that just because they have a family that they aren't able to house hack, but it's still such a great strategy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm laughing a little bit because our last guest sent us a private note that they heard a baby crying. Uh, somewhere around the house or in the house, they weren't sure and just wanted to let us know. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, that was our baby. <laughs> in case there was a lost child somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So what do you feel like was the most integral part of being able to scale up so quickly with the 24 properties you acquired in two years and then this, your current house hack is one of them, right? Yeah. Uh, so not trying to expand in Toronto, which is pretty mm -hmm. cost prohibitive, uh, and, and, and going to a market where it's really easy to get in on, on one property and, um, and then continue, just continuing the momentum. So, um, we, we had, we had equity to invest and, and so we were choosing to do it with real estate. It's awesome. Yeah, you just have to take advantage of the opportunities available and the momentum that you build up. It's just all about your mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Kaylin. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I love that you've been part of the ROI Inner Circle since the very beginning, and we've been so excited to help you through this journey to be able to provide the resources you've needed to figure out what to do with your properties and to scale up. I'm really excited to see what's to come for you and your little family. Well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. If anyone has questions for Kaylin, you can drop them in the comments. She's part of our Facebook group and in the ROI Inner Circle. As I mentioned earlier, we do have a new cash flow investing course that has all the information you could need when it comes to real estate investing. So if you have any questions about that, also feel free to drop that in the comments as well. Hope everyone has a great rest of your week and a happy Halloween.